Now we're going to look at the applications of the second derivative. We have looked at the first derivative of a function and it tells us relative extrema and where we're increasing and decreasing. Now we're going to look into the second derivative and what it tells us. So we're actually going to do our same two steps. We're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero and then make a sign chart. But now when we do this, Instead of setting the first derivative equal to zero, we're gonna set the second derivative equal to zero. And instead of plugging into the first derivative on our sign chart, we're gonna plug into the second derivative on our sign chart. And plugging into a different derivative gives us a different interpretation. So if we plug into the second derivative and we get that is bigger than zero, it's positive. That doesn't mean that the function's increasing or decreasing, that's all first derivative world. And second derivative world being positive means the original function is concave up. Concave upward, which I will normally just write as C, C, U, concave up. So if we draw some examples of what concave up would look like, that's when the second derivative is positive. And it could be a full U, that would be concave up. It could just be the left side of the U, oriented upward, or it could just be the right half of the U. So any part of that U is concave up. The full U, just the left half, or just the right half. If, on the other hand, we plug into our sign chart and we get a negative second derivative, we get something less than zero. That has nothing to do with increasing and decreasing because the second derivative tells us concavity. And if it's negative, it's concave downward, which I would normally just write as CCD. So for something concave down, it's going to be flipped over. It's an upside down U. So it could just be the full upside down U. It could just be the left half or it could just be the right half. Those are a few ways that concave downward can look. So when we're looking at intervals for concave up and concave down, our first step again is going to be using the second derivative to set it equal to zero or to figure out where it is discontinuous, figure out where it makes you divide by zero. And then our second step is to test numbers on a sign chart. And we want to remember, if we test a random test value, we get a positive second derivative. That means the original function is concave up. It looks like a full U, left side of the U, or right side of the U. If we plug into our second derivative and it is negative, that means the original function is concave down. Upside down U, left side, right side. So same two steps, completely different interpretation with a different derivative. So let's look at an example of that. So we want to look at this x cubed minus 3x squared minus 24x plus 92 and figure out where is it concave up and concave down. So our same two steps as before, but now we're going to use the second derivative instead of the first derivative. So we have to take the first derivative to get to the second derivative, though. So our first derivative, we're going to get 3x squared. Bring down the power again. Negative 3 times 2 is going to give us negative 6x. Derivative of negative 24x is negative 24, our mini rule. And derivative of 92 is 0. It's a constant. Thank goodness we are not working with the first derivative anymore. We are working with the second derivative. So I don't have to factor that first derivative at all. I'm going to jump right to the second derivative and see what I get. So derivative of 3x squared is going to give me 6x. Derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. And derivative of 24 or negative 24 is 0 because it's a constant. This is what I need to set equal to zero. So much easier to solve than the first derivative. That first derivative has an x squared and an x. We would have had to factor out a three and then reverse foiled. We would have been there for a little bit trying to solve it. But here we have a linear function, 6x minus 6. So an mx plus b, we just try to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 6 over. So 6x equals 6. And then I'm going to divide by 6. So x is 6 divided by 6, which is 1. Now remember, we didn't set the first derivative equal to zero, so this is not a critical number. Critical numbers are in first derivative world with increasing and decreasing and relative extrema. Second derivative world, we're going to call it something different. We just don't have that definition quite yet. So now we're going to put one on our sign chart. We're going to say this is our special number because it makes the second derivative zero. 
And now we're going to plug into the second derivative on our sine chart. If I wanted to know increasing and decreasing, I plug into the first derivative on the sine chart. If you want to know concave up and concave down, you're going to plug into the second derivative on your sine chart. Never plug into the original function on a sine chart. You only do that for y values. So I need to pick any number I want to to test to the left of 1. I like to test 0 when I can. So I'm going to test 0 here. And I'm going to plug into the second derivative. So I'm going to do 6 times 0 minus 6, which is going to be 0 minus 6 is a negative. So at first, this graph must be concave down. Okay, so it's oriented downward. After 1, I can plug in any value that I want to. Maybe I'll plug in 10. So I'd have 6 times 10 minus 6, plugging into my second derivative. So I'd have 60 minus 6, which is going to be a positive number. So I'm going to switch from being oriented downward to being oriented upward. And I switch at this x is 1. So there's a random sketch of what that looks like. I think it's harder to sketch concavity at first from a sign chart, but we know it's concave down to concave up, whether you want to do that sketch above or not. So our conclusion would be that it is concave up and concave down. We want to write those intervals. So it says determine where the graph is concave up and concave down. For concave up, that's this second interval here is positive. Remember, you don't want to start at 10. That's a random test value. We're going to start from 1 to infinity. And then concave down, the second derivative is negative on that first interval, so we would say that's negative infinity, not to zero, that was a random test value, but to one. So now, let's see, what can we call the x is one since it's not called a critical number? So let's look, a point of inflection on a graph of a continuous function is where the tangent line exists and where concavity changes. We call it an inflection point or a point of inflection. So to write this out in English, we need to have two things happen. This makes f double prime equals zero or undefined, makes its denominator zero. And this is the other important part, concavity changes. If you have something that makes your second derivative zero, but it's concave up before and concave up after, it is not an inflection point. Concavity has to change. So let's see, let's go back to example one and see if there's an inflection point there. So looking back at this, would we call x is one an inflection point? It made the second derivative zero, so there's the first thing we needed, made the second derivative zero. Does concavity change there? Yes, it goes from concave down to concave up, so we can label it as a point of inflection. And so it's a little bit harder than a critical number. A critical number just makes the first derivative zero or undefined and can go into the original function. It's a number on the graph. An inflection point not only makes the second derivative zero or undefined, but it also has to have concavity change, has to have the change on the sign chart. And then it's labeled as a point. So we're not just gonna write x equals, we're gonna write it as a point. It's gonna be one comma. I need to find the y value of the point by plugging in to the original function up here. We do 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared minus 24 times 1 plus 92 plugging into this original function. Our y value is 66. And that is everything that we need to know from the second derivative. Concavity and inflection points come from the second derivative, and we're going to do a few more examples of it.